Hey everyone, Pastor Stan again, bringing you a message from the Word of God, the Bible. Today we're going to talk about something I think is, is relevant to a lot of folks, and that is, how is it even possible to believe what the Bible says? All those, you know, fantastic stories and all of these things, you know, how is it possible to believe that Jesus walked on the water and, you know, rose from the dead? You know, how is it possible to believe all that stuff? So that's what we're going to look at today. Scripture lesson today is John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. John chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. Okay, here we go. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, exclaimed Nicodemus? How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants. And just as you can hear the wind, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going, so you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Oh yes, the born again experience. It's amazing how a short little phrase like this can attract so much hostility. It's amazing to me. Organized religion itself separates into two camps at this point. Now, a camp is a military term, meaning that these two groups are at war with each other. And, of course, they are at war with each other. Let's take a look. Organized religion has been split into two camps over this phrase. On the one hand, there is the you must be born again camp, where the litmus test is accepting born again in the way they define it, which is in a legalistic way. So those who fail their test are condemned to hell. And this is seen, my friends, in the Turner Burn evangelism. If you've never been, I think, accosted by the person who ascribes this view, they'll just zero right in on that, put all this pressure on me to to accept their definition of what it means. And if I, res and if I resist that, or which of course I do, <laughs> then I'm, you know, on my way to the hot place. Well, that's not at all the way that Jesus expects us to conduct ourselves with folks at all. So that's the one, turn or burn, according to their definition. Yes, the other camp though, sees the born, ex born again experience is not even needed. Not even needed since everybody goes to heaven in the end anyway. Since everybody goes to heaven, you know, God's a God of love, of course, and he would never send someone to hell because we know God personally, and that's how we know he, he would never do that, regardless of what the scripture says. So don't even need it. And their litmus test is uh, seeing uh, that you must, uh, you must see the born-again camp the other side, as the enemy. If you don't see them as the enemy, uh, then you become the enemy. And they can use any manner that they want to, to demonize you and without conscience, do evil to you because you are like the enemy enemy. The bottom line is, who is always right? That's always the bottom line. Who is right and who's going to be in control? And they fight, split over this one little phrase. It's, it's true. Now, these two groups have been war, at war with each other for some time, like a long time. And it's no wonder that when they both rejected Jesus and his teaching, their churches began to decline. After all, if they truly followed Jesus' teachings, they would love each other, just as Jesus says in John 13, 34. Here's what Jesus said. Now I am giving you a new commandment, Love each other. Just as I've loved you, you must love each other. Your love for each other will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Well, big fail 
on that one by the church. Big time fail. Because here, uh, Jesus said, everybody at there, all the unbelievers, all the uh, unforgiven, they're going to know you're my disciples, my followers, because of your love for each other. Well, I'm not seeing a lot of love there between those two groups. Yes, both groups, quite frankly, do not know Jesus as Savior, no matter what they say, because of their refusal to obey him, which is going to come as a shock to a lot of folks on the Day of Judgment. Here's what John says, 1421. Jesus says, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Yes. And so organized religion has failed miserably in obeying Jesus' commandments, and even defiantly so. Even defiantly so. And they just refuse to love each other, which proves that they do not belong to him. Jesus' commandments are vital to prove that we do love him and that we have received the Holy Spirit. And in fact, uh, the truth of the matter in receiving the Holy Spirit is that it's a gift. It's a gift, not something to use to down others. The Holy Spirit's given by God to those who obey him. That's what the scripture says. Remember, you must be born again. You must be born from above, Jesus said. You must be born of the Holy Spirit. And so, if we're born of the Holy Spirit, guess what? We will love each other and not be fighting and fussing and trying to take control of everything. So here's the scripture. Acts chapter 5, 29. Look at this. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead after you killed him by hanging him on a cross. Then God put him in the place of honor at his right hand as prince and savior. He did this so the people of Israel would repent of their sins and be forgiven. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, who was given by God to those who obey him. He says, the Holy Spirit is a witness also because he is given by God to those who obey him. Now, if, if organized religion refuses to love people, refuses to love each other, then guess what? They do not have the Holy Spirit, which is also going to be a shock to a lot of folks on the Day of Judgment. No doubt. Let me say it again. Organized religion does not obey Jesus, refuses to love each other. Therefore, they do not have the Holy Spirit. And if they did have the Holy Spirit, they would not act the way that they do. In other words, in other words, the world. They act just like the unforgiven because guess what? They are unforgiven. They are unforgiven. They are not born from above. Otherwise, they wouldn't be acting this way. Now, some might say that I'm using circular reasoning here. And it's not valid to say the Bible says it's true, so that makes it true. That's circular reasoning reading. Uh, the Bible says it's true, therefore it's true. That's circular, circular reasoning. So here's what I would point out to you folks who are thinking this way. I would simply point out to those people who have accepted Jesus as Savior and now live a completely new life. You might know some who were this way, accepted Jesus, received the Holy Spirit, obeyed him, was born from above, and now live a completely new life. And the life they live is a life like Jesus lived because they obey him. They obey him. Here's what the Apostle Paul writes, 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. Since we believe that the Messiah died for all, we also believe that all of us have died to our old life. Jesus died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for the Messiah. They will live for Jesus, no longer for themselves. They will live for Jesus, who died and was raised for them. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of the Messiah merely from a human point of view, how differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to the Messiah has become a new person, the old life is gone, a new life has begun. 
Accepting Jesus as Savior, my friends, means his sacrifice on the cross is applied to my life. I am forgiven everything I ever did wrong, and because I obey Jesus' commandments, I receive the Holy Spirit, who then proceeds to transform me into the new person God has chosen me to be. This new life is being born from above through the power of the Holy Spirit, who is now with me forever. The evidence is the old life is gone, a new life has begun. Now I see the Bible not as a book of human words, but the words of the Almighty God. Now it is easy to believe them. Well, what do we learn today, preacher? Well, here's some things that I learned. Number one, organized religion weaponizes the term born again against those who don't agree with them. On both sides, the everyone goes to heaven in the end, so there's no need for the born again thing. And the other side who says, if, unless you follow the born again experience as the way we define it, then you're also going to burn in hell. Organized religion weaponizes the term born again against those who don't agree with them. Number two, receiving the Holy Spirit is a gift from God to those who obey Jesus. Receiving the Holy Spirit is a gift from God to those who obey Jesus. And finally, number three, obeying Jesus shows that I love him and have received his new life. Obeying Jesus shows I love him and have received his new life. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for sending Jesus from heaven to die on the cross for my sins. Help me live the new life through the power of the Holy Spirit. And thank you for loving me, and I love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God be with you, my friends. We'll see you next time on the Pastor Stan YouTube channel. God loves you, and so do I. See you then. Bye-bye.